welcome to the Leon Hendricks story, series one, episode one. Today we'll be talking with Leon Hendricks. Um, as your grandson, do I have permission to record this interview? Uh, of course you do. Okay. So, Grandpa, where and when were you born? I was born in Seattle, Washington, uh, 1948, uh, at Harvard View Hospital. No, Seattle Hospital. And, uh... That's it. Cool. So what brings you to Seattle this holiday? Uh, Jimmy's birthday, Jimmy's death day, uh, Thanksgiving, and Christmas and New Year's. So what, are, what were your parents' names, Grandpa? Uh, Lucille was my mama's name. Uh, Al Hendricks was my father's name. Uh, his real name was James Allen Hendricks, but then everybody called him Al. Where are some of the other places you perform at that you can think of off the top of your head? Uh, Brazil, uh, Italy, Macedonia, France, all the countries in Europe. So, growing up with your brother, tell me about the neighborhood you guys lived in. Was that, if I, I don't know for sure, but that was Seattle area, right? What, what neighborhood? Well, it was uh, actually uh, on Empire Way, it was the uh, Greener Vista uh, housing projects. Okay. So what's your favorite, what was your favorite place in Seattle like to visit growing up? Growing up? Yeah. It wasn't much. Jimmy liked to go to the library a lot. Mm -hmm. You know, we walked there and uh, I don't know, we used to go to the waterfront a lot. Um, Jimmy was so adventurous, we were always moving and, and walking somewhere. Yeah. You know? Sometimes we had to, if we were hungry, we'd walk all the way across town to our aunt. Ernestine's house. So, tell me about Auntie Ernestine. Ah, oh, she was um, she was a friend of my father's, and uh, I ended up living in, living with her in the foster home because my dad wanted to keep me close. You know, when I, when I started to go to foster houses. Yeah. So she uh, she was a good woman. You know, she had other kids and uh, and other other foster kids and. Uh, she was just one of those angels in my life. Mm -hmm. Took care of me and bust her life. And plus, she was the one that uh, had the record player with the, all the old people like Muddy Waters and Robert Johnson. You know? Oh, wow. And, you know, on this old record player named Jimmy with this, you know, we called him Buster then. Uh, you know, every Saturday, we'd go to the field house at the, you know, field house projects, you yeah. know, the little, little gym and stuff like that where everybody got together. Okay. And they would show this movie. It was called Flash Gordon. You know? Yeah. And Buster Crab. You know? And we got this for a nickel. My dad would give us a nickel. And we'd go there every Saturday. We'd only see 15 minutes of it, though. Oh, uh, wow. You know? And then we had to wait till next Saturday. So if it cost a nickel for entry, how much was the popcorn? There wasn't no popcorn. Oh, wow. <laughs> Not back then. Yeah. And so. This is a highlight in our life to uh, go to the field house every Saturday. You know, my dad would tease us about giving us a nickel, you know, a piece. Mm -hmm. you know. I don't know, you know, how dads are. And uh, they do there, and so he, he loved the outer space stuff already, you know. Mm -hmm. in, in this old time, you could see the matchstick hanging out the back of the rocket, the rocket's being held up by a string. Yeah. yeah. And doing this, you know, and, and that was. Uh, outer space then, you know. And, yeah, that was, that was a lot back then. So tell me about your dad. Uh, my dad was, he was, he was a good hard worker. Uh, he grew up during the depression and, you know, and he believed in uh, hard work and, you know, stuff like that. And uh, uh, he, he was a good man. He did, he did the best he could with us, you know. He, me and Buster, like, had to live with my dad uh, for a for years, just the three of us. Yeah. You know. Um, Did you ever hear a story about how your mom and dad met? Yeah. Um, my dad said that uh, he invited her. She was pretty young. He had to go get permission from uh, old man Jeter, mm -hmm. you know, Grandpa Jeter. And um, he said, you know, he was at. He was like proper. He went to, <laughs> went to the father and said, hey, I'm going to take you to do a jitterbug. 
down at Fast Waller concert. Yeah. And actually, the, she, they won the contest. The, the jitterbug, let's call it. You know? So, tell me about how you met my grandmother, Chris. Christine. Yes. Okay, we were. Uh, I was. Uh, uh, there was this club called the District. It was in University District, uh, and I saw her one day at the club. You know, mm -hmm. had this nice red hair, green eyes. You know. <laughs> yeah. What happened next? Pretty foxy. Well, uh, she became my girlfriend, and, uh, and she's like a, a road dog with me. You know. She, she going to uh, when I was booking bands, she come with me and stuff like that, and kept kept the the books and stuff. And uh, then we, and then I fell in love with her and we got married. And tell me about how the kids came along. I know my mom was the first one, but yeah, just tell me about that. Like, what do you remember about just each of the six kids? Just go through that. <laughs> well, uh, my first daughter, she came. At the, no, we got married, and then uh, Tina was born, and then two years later, Leanne was born. And then uh, I wanted a boy, so then after that Alex was born, and then Jason was born, and then little Jimmy was born. They called him little Jimmy because he's born on Jimmy's birthday. Yeah. So the radio station, I we had nothing to do with it. These little, because my father was in the hospital at the same time, you know, had a little bit of heart trouble. Mm -hmm. And so he told, he went to interview him about Jimmy, and he didn't want to talk, so he said, but, but my, my daughter-in-law, my son's having a child right now, and so they went down and interviewed me, and I said, yeah, we're having this kid, and they said, well, what are you calling it? I said, I don't know, I didn't think of that, what they call it, you know? So they said, they went on the radio and went, little Jimmy born, <laughs> you know? So that stuck, so it was little Jimmy. Yeah. Cool. So yeah, what do you remember about like some of your grandkids? Uh, you, of course. Uh, I just remember that we, I always took them places. Yeah, you know. Uh, tell me about the. Uh, I, I recall that trip to that island we went to. There for like, as oh, a, my my house on Bainbridge. Yeah, Bainbridge. Right? Yeah. Talk about that house. Oh, it was, it was an awesome house. It was uh, like uh, right on the water, and it had a little uh, second house that was on the water in mm -hmm. the cliff, illegal. But it was it was pretty, you know. It was I, it was the most beautiful thing I've seen. Like I remember, like me and my cousins were. Catching crabs in a bucket was pretty cool. Yeah, all, all my, everybody was there. All also my the, kids, the Joneses, the Joneses too, yeah. Because uh -huh. they came from Dolores' side. Yeah? Yeah. Wow, memories. Yeah. That was good. And the eagle would fly down and catch a seal or something and get right on the deck and eat it and mm. throw the guts around. Yeah. You know, my girlfriend, she didn't like that. <laughs> what was your favorite show overseas? Uh, probably, uh... Italy and Rome. Uh, I think I was with Randy Hansen then. Uh, but otherwise, my other band, you know, uh, I like to go into the resorts, you know, up north in Italy, like Milan. I like Milan. And, and then we fly, usually fly to Macedonia, and then uh, Yugoslavia, and then do something else, because I'm going back and forth so many times, I don't know. Yeah. Catch a, we gotta catch a little plane to go to the big airport, you know. Yeah. It, 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 it's fun though. And uh, England is pretty good. Uh, they're all good. Yeah. You know, there's the one of, there's no best one. Yeah. The best one is the next one. Right. So tell me about, if I recall correctly, you served in the armed services? Yeah. So tell me about that. <laughs> Woo. Hopefully it doesn't bring so much PTSD. It was, no, I well, I didn't have no PSTD or whatever that's called because you know I got the same thing happened to Jimmy. You know, he got in a little trouble. You know, had to go to juvie hole. You know, but then it, uh, the judge said if you go in the army, you know, we'd let you go. So he went in the army. So a few years later, same thing happened to me. I got in trouble. Uh, went to court. My my dad rushed down to the uh, courthouse with my draft paper. Yeah. You know, and showed the judge. You know, he said, "Don't put him in jail. He got this draft." And judge said, "Oh, cool. Off in the army you go." So I went to the army. I loved it. Yeah. So did you get deployed? Huh? No. What happened was uh, 
uh, they kind of treated me bad because they found out that uh, Jimmy was my brother and, and they didn't like the way he played the Star Spangled Banner. Wow. <laughs> you know, they was like mean to me. They thought it was like a disgrace for him to like yeah. put on the spin on it? Wow. And, and Jimmy just voiced the words. He didn't say them, but the words are horrible. You yeah. know, bomb is crashing down on people and stuff like that, yeah. you know. So Jimmy was kind of crying and at the same time doing Star Spangled Banner. Uh, voicing it with the guitar instead of the horrible words. Yeah. You know? <laughs> and nowadays, like, it's common for them to, like, do violins or people to do yeah. flutes or harmonica. Like, people mm -hmm. use instruments now without doing the words, but he might have been, like, yeah, one of the first innovators for that. Well, anyway, I got in trouble. Well, I didn't get in trouble, but I made a lot of friends in there because they were on my side. Yeah. You know? So I had to do KP duty. Uh, I had to peel a whole room of potatoes. It, it's a task when you look at the potatoes. There's so many that you don't think it's possible, but all you have to do is do that first one. Yeah. And man, it, they were gone, you know? <laughs> and so I did that. And then uh, they let me work in the garden and stuff like that and stuff like that. So they didn't really want me around in the army. Wow, you know, Because years. my friends that I made in the army, they were like on my side and they were always talking for me and stuff. And so this general came, or the captain came to me and said, this is near. There's only one captain of this this uh, outfit, and it's me. And I'm going, well, I, I haven't done it <laughs> I know. He said, but so I, I kind of was too popular, so they put me in a stockade. Uh, you know, uh, it wasn't bad, you know. And uh, then they let me out, and then, you know, I was doing gardening work, and then it came on the radio that Jimmy was coming to town, you know. So I got a pass, you know. And, and went to see Jimmy, and after the show, he said, Leon, go on tour with me. I said, yep, I forgot I was in the Army. <laughs> so what happened with that? I, I, was, I was gone for about a year with Jimmy and, on tour, and uh, uh, I forgot all the, you know, I didn't forget it, but I knew they were going to get me pretty soon, you know. For going AWOL or what? Yeah, so uh, uh, Jimmy, Jimmy went to New York. He said, okay, meet me in New York. Uh, because he was making a new company for his Electric Ladyland Studios mm -hmm. because his contract was almost up with, with uh, Mike Jeffries. So he said, meet me in New York. So I said, okay, okay. So I said, I'm going to go to Seattle, you know, first and see Dad and stuff and, you know. But then the MPs from the Army... Military police, yeah. Yeah, they are at my dad's house a week before I was coming. And my dad's so, he's so, he's so innocent. <laughs> they go, oh, we're looking for your son. He said, oh, yeah, he's in the Army. He'll be home next week. <laughs> That's my dad, you know. Yeah. And so uh, exactly when I came home, there they were, you know. I didn't even get to go in the house. Yeah. yeah. That's, that's another story. So what was, like, the meals like growing up? Like, the meals? Yeah. Like, oh, wow. Uh, well, anyway, uh, my dad felt as though he didn't have time to cook because he was a hard worker. He did all kinds of stuff. He did gardening. He went to electric a school to be an elect, uh, electrician. Mm -hmm. uh, he passed it, but he was black and couldn't get the job, couldn't get in the union. So he became a landscaper and a recycler. Man, it was fun. Me and Jimmy would go with him. We'd collect glass and aluminum cans, and he knew all the aluminum was thrown away. And he was just a good recycler. You know, so me and Jimmy did that with him. It was, it was always an adventure. So my dad would cook a big pot of spaghetti, and it had to last me and Jimmy like almost all week, you know, yeah. maybe three or four days. Yeah. And that's why I don't like spaghetti no more. You put sugar in it, is that where that came from? Uh, I don't know, it brown, it, you're supposed to put a little brown sugar a little bit in the brown. sauce, yeah. Cool. And so then my dad would get this tongue, because he worked at, you know, cleaned up the butcher shops down in the, in the farmer's market on Pike Street. You know, early in the morning, four or five in the morning, he'd go there and uh, sweep all the stall stuff. So, they were real funny with him. They gave him, would give him a tongue every week. Yeah. A beef tongue. Okay. You know, it's so good. The first one. Yeah. But you know, you can't eat tongue like three or four times. You know, three or four days of the week. Mm -hmm. So, but anyway, uh, we made a lot of sandwiches and meals. And when my mom came home, you know, to visit, we knew she was home because we could smell the good breakfast. Mm -hmm. Pancakes and stuff. We said, we said, Mama's home. You know. Yeah. Yeah. So, what about the house you guys grew up in? Tell me about that. 
Okay, well, first of all, it was at the uh, Reina Vista Field, I mean, Reina Vista Projects. Yeah, as you mentioned, yeah. And then my father finally got a job uh, at City Light. And, but they wouldn't let him be an electrician. They, he had to pump gas there. So all, the, like, all his buddies, you know, that you know, kind of savvy because he couldn't get the you know, job. Yeah. I would tell him where they, he, they could, he could find copper, where they, all the guys would go out. And they would always leave copper around, throw it away. And my dad would go after them and pick up all this copper and he made a pretty good living with this copper. Through that job, he was able to buy a new car. And uh, it was a 50, uh, like a 53 Pontiac or some blue convertible. He was so proud. And mama would, you know, his mama was still there. And, uh, and we, so he bought this house on 26th in Washington Street in the CD area, you know. First house, you know, and we lived there and then uh, a couple of relatives came to live there with us and, uh, you know, that house is still around. They chopped it up and turned it into like a Lego thing so that they can put it together one day. Oh, wow. Yeah. And then tell me about, did you, have, did you guys have any pets growing up? Yeah, we had a dog called Prince. Uh, what kind of dog? A dog. <laughs> <laughs> who took care of the Prince the most? Like who was? No, it was me, Jimmy, and the dog. Always, we walked miles to go to different places to eat yeah. and stuff like that, and listen to records over at Ann Hurstens. And, uh, and our our neighbor women, they were so good. We had Mrs. Weinstein across the street. She was Jewish, and she would always, you know, invite us in for matzo ball soup, make chocolate cake. You know, kind of, you know, took care of herself. So, and then the, Mrs. Jackson across the street on the corner, you know, she was black and she she took, looked out for us because she would say, come here, boys, you know. And we'd go up there with the dog, you know, and she'd make us, she'd do our laundry and give us fried chicken and corn and stuff like that. So uh, they were always, the neighborhood women were always looking out for us. So tell me about high school. What high school did you go to? Uh, I went to Franklin, uh, Cleveland, Ballard. I was the first kid bust. You know, so it was hard. You know? Yeah. So why did you change school so many times? You're moving a lot. Or... I had a lot of problems as, as a child. You know, uh, and I was shuffled around to different foster homes for a minute. You know, me and Jimmy hid out for many months. Sometimes my dad would take us every uh, summer to Canada to live with our grandma. Mm -hmm. uh, because they, the welfare people were trying to take me, you know? Yeah. And then my dad said, don't open the door for anybody because they had this little green car. Mm -hmm. was, uh, a stencil said State Department or something, you know, welfare department, you know? But anyway, um, so. On top of that, high school age, like starting to get toward adulthood, what oh, like yeah. your favorite artist before Jimmy started playing the music one? Uh, do, 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 do. I kind of stuff that, you know, uh, pre 60s kind of rock and roll. Yeah. Um, I don't know, you know. Music from the 60s was so powerful that the music before that kind of got dwindled in my memory. Mm -hmm. you know? The 60s, they wrote the music that kind of moved the world. You know, uh, you know it's peace and love and those dancing and music in the park and the girls are wearing flowers in the hair, you know, wanting to play. And they love chase rainbows and butterflies all day, you know. It's like I was resurrected from that life. I used to dream, now I stream, you know. Mm -hmm. and, you know, and everything's different now. You know, I come back to find the earth worse off than I left it. So I maybe I try to make my footprint a little smaller this time. Yeah, so <laughs> tell me a little bit more about that. Burying those demons and getting back to your normal self and getting rid of drinking and turning, well, turning the page on that chapter of your life. Well, uh, it's hard being a human being sometimes, you know. Uh, we've all done stuff and, you know, regret it and, uh, you know. But at the same time, you have to, you know, it, time just keeps on going and uh, you have to kind of flow with the times, you know. You got to let shit go. You know, and uh, I like peace. You know, I like to meditate and have peace, and I don't like a bunch of commotion and confusion around me. I just want to play my music and uh, uh, try to navigate this new wireless world. You know, because now we know it exists. 
Listen, life is so mysterious already. Uh, God gave us this gift, or the universe gave us this gift of imagination. Yeah. Everything you've seen, everything, when I was a child, I watched TV. Everything I've seen on TV has come true. You know, nobody ever think that we would go to the moon, you know. Even my teachers in grade school, they say, oh, hey, blah, 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 you know. But we went to the moon. Uh, the, everything that I've seen on television has come true. That's why they call it television. Tele means to transport over long distances, right? Yeah. And vision means to look, see into the future. Wow. Television, you know. Earth is just one dwelling place. Yeah. You know what I'm talking about? And if, if you can imagine it, it's possible. Everything is real. This is our power, our imagination. Look, yeah. at, look what we've done. Everything on the earth right now, all this clutter. Let's put it here by imagination, you know. Everything's possible. But we know the wireless world exists, right? If AT&T can take all my info and store my shit up in an iCloud, I think the universe has an iCloud personally for every one of us. Yeah. We're part of the whole universe, you know, we got life. You know, to, to see how big you really are is believe you're a piece of a grain of sand and then believe that as many sand pebbles are in the seas are the stars, not billions, trillions. Yeah. You know, many, many things going on. You know, we don't even know nothing. We're just like humans. And finally, when God, the universe gave us this spirit, we became human beings. Yeah. You know, that means two. So we got this power, you know, and it's wireless. Yeah. Most, it's, uh, of, most of the beautiful shit's wireless. Yeah. Music, love, all our emotions, you know, thoughts, memories. That's all wireless shit. But it works something like that technologies of right now that kind of like confuse you or like wow this is this is crazy what they're getting at. Everything's wireless now. Yeah. Everything. Everything we do. Like is wireless. Wireless. We're, we're so our spirit is wireless. Yeah. So when we uh vacate this vessel, you gotta learn to meditate the wireless world. Yeah. And it's vast because you've never seen a phone call bump into each other. Yeah. You know, at and is making billions a day. Billions of phone calls, none of them are bumping. Yeah. So that means that it's fast and it's spiritual. Mm -hmm. So let's talk about uh, the memorial we did for your brother recently uh, that my mom hosted. And talk about like some of the performances that you've seen there, like such as our family members. How that like surprised you? Oh yeah, I, because I don't I I only come up here on on holidays and stuff, so I miss out on all my little my my tree my family tree are so creative, you know. Oh wow, this. I think we can have a whole Hendrix band. Literally. Just with, you know, Hendrix family band. You know, so many different, like, music, like, talents, like, or there's rap, rock and roll. No, we got everything. We got, everything. you got, you got me classic, and then from classic is all on down, you know, mm -hmm. and the new stuff coming too, you know. Yeah. After this COVID, there's going to be a burst of new music because it has to be, you know, be a new era of music, and I want to be a part of it. Let's talk about, you talk about you're only here for the holidays. Let's talk about L.A. lifestyle, like living in L.A. When did you first move to L.A. for good? Uh, first I went to treatment. Mm -hmm. Going down in L.A., you know, nice, you know, you know, place. Because I was a bad alcoholic and stuff. I don't know, I just liked it down there. You know, met, met a nice girl, you know. Yeah. Uh, in fact, we met in treatment. That's good. But I'm not going to say nothing about that. I yeah, like what type of people have you met while you're down there? It's like, when I was down there, like, it seems like everyone knows somebody in LA. Everybody's down there, you know. Uh, you know, since, you know, a lot of the famous bands that are kind of like drifted off and did their own thing during COVID and stuff, mm -hmm. they're down there playing for free. I can't even get a job down there now. They said, Leah, so and so from Pro Jam and uh, Soundgarden are here and they're going to play for free. I'm going, oh. <laughs> So I said, okay, that's all good. Yeah, it's just more about the music. I'll play for free anyway. You know, I play, for, I play for free a lot. Yeah. What do you, couple. what do you like about LA? Did you ever get to go to like Universal Studios or? Yeah, I've been everything in LA. Yeah. You know, uh, I just love LA. I, but I love Seattle too. I, I miss Seattle so much. You know, I need to smell trees. You know, and and feel rain. Yeah. Know? And sometimes snow, but not this much snow. I know. It's all good though. Yeah. I remember when your uh, your car was stuck on that hill, you were able to 
put the car around and you only had the, the rear wheel drive. Yeah, I didn't want to come out here and not have no no car. You know? <laughs> <laughs> I almost ran away already. So. Yeah, okay. Mm -hmm. So yeah, speak about what you think, how like impressed you are with the Hendrix Music Academy, like how my mom's been doing that. Oh, wow, that's, I'm proud of her. When she you know, first, first started, uh, it's an awesome thing to, to uh, develop this, you know, these children, uh, they have a few problems and stuff like that. And, yeah. But the Music Academy is gave, it's so inspiring. They come here and they become, they learn everything. They learn about love and music and, uh, you know, how to record it and how to produce it and stuff like that. And, uh, I'm just so proud of her. The kids and all the kids are successful. Yeah, and then I know recently, sadly, Rosalie Brooks passed away. Uh, oh yeah. Speak to me about her and what she meant. Okay, uh, she, I met her. Uh, I flew to. Uh, I flew down to do Jimmy's uh, Walk of Fame star with my dad. Me and my dad went down there, and uh, and, and she was there, and also Arthur Lee was there from Love, you know, they were good friends. They wrote a song, couple of songs together. And so uh, that's where I met her and uh, we kept in contact. And then when I went down there to live, uh, I went over to her place and we made a couple of records. We played, I played with her in concert, you know, several times. And, uh, and she was uh, one of Jimmy's old girlfriends. And uh, we had a lot of stories to share and they were, you know, fun and, and God bless you, Rosalie, and tell Jimmy I said hi. God bless her. Yeah. What about Randy Hanson? I know you guys did a lot of things together. I met him, he was a youngster, and I, I booked him here in Seattle, and I brought my father there. You know, my father cried, because Randy Hanson was so good, you know. And then I go on uh, tour with him a lot. There he is right now. Yeah, this is both of you guys playing. Yeah. What about your favorite story with him though? I mean, like, besides the plane, of course. Any you know, like fun times or like? You guys... all, yeah, we're good. he's like my he's like my brother. He carries the Jimmy Hendrix spirit so good that you know, mm, it's a beautiful thing. To yeah. see, you know, uh, he's the only one too that carries it like that. Talking about the Germany, huh? out there. Germany. Oh yeah. With him. I think there. we had forty. We had forty gigs in Europe. And I said, I'm not, I can't do 40 gigs. You know, no way. Mm -hmm. But uh, pretty soon I was saying goodbye to them. You know, after like eight weeks or something like that. 40 gigs. Wow. Did you guys ever get in a car accident? Yeah. That's right. What we happened with that? Well, we had this crazy Italian guy who couldn't speak English. He was your chauffeur or something? No, he was one of the drivers of one of the trucks. Mm -hmm. So I put him in it. And so, uh, he was crazy, and he was just—he was always speeding and stuff, and and finally he sped right into the back of a car on the freeway. Oh goodness! You know, bam! Uh, Kevin Filo—he uh, broke his leg. Uh, Randy got tossed around in the back. Uh, I wasn't in that car. I was in the one in back. Oh, you know. Did you guys crash too? Or no? no, we stopped. But then it was horrible because we were on our way to a gig, and Kevin's got a broken leg. Oh no! Me and Randy jumped out and. We Went over there and hugged and said, oh my god, oh my god. And so, uh, went to the hospital, he still arranged for a new truck. Picked the equipment up, same day. Yeah. You know, so we continue on to our, our gig. You know, like, awesome. Yeah, <laughs> I love it. worked out. So we've had a good talk today. Um, this is just episode one of a series, a series one from Leon Hedrick's story. And we will uh, be back soon with episode two. And I just want to say thank you to Leon. Hey, great all right.